remember all my friends being skinny and I was always the, the big boned girl and you know the thicker one and so my kind of way of hiding that was being that one friend that you know could eat everything on the table which I enjoyed for the meantime until it took a toll on me and it got to the point where I needed to make a change. My name is Ladon Latavich and I'm 27 years old. Ooh, that's not exciting. <laughs> My unhealthy relationship, I don't really even know when it started. I just knew growing up that I loved food and I loved everything about food. Nobody really knew because I was always so active and looked at as, you know, a pretty good athlete. And I hid my weight well by being a tomboy. I didn't wear tight clothes. I wouldn't wear, you know, jeans or anything like that that would be tight in the waist because I didn't want my stomach hanging over. And so everyone just thought that I was a normal athlete that was okay with everything and okay with food. I was in a relationship with somebody. He was a bodybuilder and so he was able to eat a lot of food and not put on fat like I would. And so we had this weird relationship where we would just eat and binge and get all this junk food and it wouldn't affect him, but yet it affected me. And it got to the point when I went home for Christmas one year and my uncle, who usually makes jokes and I don't usually take them personally, but he made a joke that I got fat and it was the first time in my life that I got scared. I was like, oh no, people, people can see it now. They're, they, can, they can tell that I'm, I'm gaining weight. So when I went home back to where I lived after that Christmas, I was mad and was like, oh, I don't care. Like, it's fine, I'll get back on track. I'll get healthy again. But my person I was dating went to work one day and I remember going to the store and just getting so much junk food, everything that you can imagine, and locking myself in my bedroom and sitting in my bra and underwear with my gut hanging out, watching Netflix for like six hours and just eating everything in sight because I thought it would make me feel better. Then I started crying because I was like, this is, this is my life. How am, I gonna, how am I gonna get over this? How am I gonna stop this? And so that's when I decided to enter the Bodybuilding.com Transformation Challenge in January of 2015 and slowly made a change. Some of the steps I took, because I already knew a little bit about fitness just with growing up playing high-level soccer, I mean, I, I knew how to work out, so that really wasn't the issue, but it was the food that I needed to get some help on. And so I finally made a plan when I signed up for that challenge in 2015 that I was actually going to meal prep. If you do not have prep on your food, you are resorted to eating fast food all day or whatever is laying around the office and nine times out of ten that's not going to be healthy food. So eventually I learned that if I just ate less of regular food I was going to lose weight and then I could kind of be more strict. I scaled back and then my stomach size obviously shrank because as I slowly started eating less at each meal back to a normal person's portion, um, I would actually get full after eating that instead of having to go past that point. There's been some family stuff, unfortunately. Life gets in the way a lot of any goal or dream that you're gonna have. I, uh, in, um, October, my brother passed away. And so that was a big roadblock. And it made me scared because he was super active and super into fitness. And he had just recently moved in with me and we had all these plans about working out together and recording each other doing workouts and once he passed away, I, um, I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to go back to the gym the same way. 
and was just, when I get sad or depressed or down, I turn to food. And because that's what I had done my whole life, I was so scared that that was gonna happen again. I did take time off from the gym because it's hard to train when something like that happens, but I stayed on track with my food and I didn't binge or I didn't go crazy, mostly because I would picture my brother calling me fat <laughs> because he would laugh at my old pictures saying, I can't believe you got that way and would bug me about it in a good way because that's what you know brothers and sisters do. And so I secretly was like, I can't, I can't let myself get there. He's going to be laughing at me from the grave. <laughs> so I fought through and went back to the gym as kind of a therapy. And I don't know, it was just, it was different because I've hit roadblocks in the past before where, you know, you get your heart broken or I would lose, you know, a championship game in soccer or whatever. And I would seriously just eat for two or three weeks straight because I thought that was gonna make me feel better, which in the end, it makes you feel 10 times worse. <laughs> I guess I just, I was stronger because of that. And knowing that I got through that and knowing that I didn't fall off track again and go back to that dark place that I was in, I know that this is now a forever thing for me where I'm gonna be okay and I'm not going to go back to that place that I was. You need to find something that you're passionate about, strive for it, and build a community around you of support and get rid of people in your life that are not there to help you along your journey, whatever it may be. They may be your friends and they may, you know, say that they're supporting you, but if they're deterring you from your goals and, you know, if you're trying to lose weight and they keep telling you, no, it's fine, just have that extra slice of cake or, you know, keep going out with them, you need to make a change and just change the lifestyle that you have and just tell them how important your goals are and just keep on track and focus as to where you want to go.